Do you want to know how to install a mail server on Linux in just 10 minutes? Only using free and open source software? Keep watching. Hi everybody, welcome to the digital life. My name is Christian and I'm always teaching you how to become an IT professional. So if you are interested in Linux, Python, networking, cloud, web and all those stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you are watching this video and you already know how a mail server works, you know what Docker is, Postfix, Dovcode and all those stuff, keep watching, I will show you an easy deployment and management process. And for those of you who don't even know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I will explain it to you and I first will explain a few basics about mail servers. So when somebody wants to send you an email, the other mail server or client will first need to know where to deliver that email to. The other mail server will look up your MX record on your public domain servers and find out the IP where it will connect to. So your mail server will need to listen on that IP for any incoming connection, accept it and then will decide which mailbox the email should be delivered to. That is what we call a mail transfer agent. So once the mail transfer agent has delivered the email, you want to somehow read it. So you will need a client on a computer or a smartphone that will need to connect to your email server via various protocols. They are called IMAP or POP3. They are both different protocols, I don't want to step too much into depth. You just need to know you need to run a service on your email server where clients can connect to in order to read and write emails. You pro also probably want to have a web server where you can connect and enter your credentials and just log into a web interface where you can read your emails or send new emails as well. And yes, you need to set up a web server for this as well. So you can see an email server is not just a single application. It is a collection of various protocols and services that are needed to achieve a fully featured email experience. In the past you would have to configure every single application like mail transfer agent, IMAP or POP3 server, web server, all yourself. And the configuration was done in static config files. I remember these days. But fortunately today there is an easy solution where you can set up all this stuff straight forward. And trust me, you can do it in 10 minutes for sure. So how can we do that? We will use Docker and Docker Compose to easily manage all those single applications. Don't worry if you don't know what Docker is. I will make more videos about Docker and also Docker Compose. But for this video you just need to know how to install it. The management of all the single applications that are isolated in Docker containers is done by a fully featured and pre-configured email solution called MailCow. So you don't need to touch any Docker Compose config file or any other static config files for these applications. MailCo will all do that for you. Okay, so don't waste time anymore. Let's step right into the installation process. Before we can install MailCo to set up our email server, we first need to install Docker and Docker Compose on our Linux server. I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, but you can set up Docker on almost every other Linux distribution as well. Make sure that you probably need to check the official Docker homepage for an installation guide on other distributions. And when you want to use the same commands like me, and you just want to copy paste them, check out the link in the description below. On my blog you'll find a written article where you can just copy paste all commands. So we first should update all software packages in Ubuntu. This is done via this command here. Then we will need to install a few software packages before we can install Docker. I'm using the same commands from the official Docker homepage to install it on Ubuntu servers. This will add the official docker gpg key and add the docker repository in our mirror list to be able to install docker via the package manager. After doing that you will need to update the list and then install docker ce, docker ce cli and container d. These are the essential packages that will be needed to run applications in containers. To check if docker is successfully installed, 
just execute the command docker run hello world. It will automatically download a test container image and run it. If you see a screen like this, everything is working fine. Now you need to install docker compose. This is simply done via this command, I just copied it from the official docker homepage. Note that you will need to check if a newer version is released and replace the version number with the latest stable release number. Check the link of the official docker homepage in the description below. After that you need to add the execute permissions to the docker compose file. To check if everything is working fine, just execute this command and it should tell you the docker compose version you have just installed. Ok, we will now switch into the opt folder and check if we have super user permissions. The umask command should give us a value of 0002. This means we don't have any super user permissions. You can now proceed and just use the sudo command or you switch to the root user which is recommended by the mailco installation guide. When we now execute umask it shows us the correct permission 0022. Ok, now we need to clone the mailcow repository from github using this command here. Note that it's recommend to put it into the opt folder. When we now switch to the mailcow dockerized folder we should see all the files. Ok, time to configure our mail server. We can use the generate underscore config.sh file that will easily generate a basic config file for you. You will just need to enter your fqdn of your mail server and your selected time zone. So fqdn stands for fully qualified domain name and is the name of your mail server that should resolve to the public IP address. So in my case I'm using a virtual test lab on my local computer, therefore I can't use an fqdn that is resolvable on the internet. I will enter mail.ubuntu.local. I know local is a top level domain, but it's just fine for my test setup because I don't have any intention to make this server available to the internet. In your case, please make sure that you use the correct fqdn name instead. The shell script has now created a mailcow.conf file in the folder. You can now open that file and do some customizations in your setup. By default, mailcow will try to generate a validated SSL certificate via the free Let's Encrypt servers for every domain that you configure in your email server. So you don't need to worry about it. But be careful, because your domain should also be resolvable on the internet, because less encrypt servers will send a challenge request to verify that you actually own the domain. In my case, I used a .local domain that is not resolved to my mail server. In this case, or if you want to use custom SSL certificates, you can configure to skip the generation of these certificates in the mailcow.conf file. It's done via this entry here. Ok, so everything is now configured. There is not really much to do else right now. I will exit the super user shell and simply start all services via docker. To run your mail server, execute the command docker-compose up-d. The parameter will tell docker compose to run the containers in the background. When this is the first time you start the services, it can now take some time because docker will now need to download all image files of the containers from the docker hub. When the download has finished, it will try to start all containers and you should see a done right after all containers in green color. If you want to check the status of the containers, simply execute this command here and you should see an up in the state row after every container. Let's do a simple check if our mail server listens on port 25. When someone will send us an email, he will try to connect to this port via a syn request and our mail server should respond to it. 
You can see the TCP connection was successfully established, but our email server has just closed the connection because it didn't get any useful input. Anyway, it should work fine. You can also check the all listening ports on your server with this command. And you can see that Mailco has successfully started an SMTP server, a web server and also a database server on our local computer. These ports are used by all the different containers and applications that are just started via Docker Compose. And that's pretty much it. You have installed your mail server, it's up and running. Note that it can take longer if you want to set up your own HTTPS certificates and so on. And you now can start to set up your domains, your mailboxes and adjust any settings on the mail server. To configure your mail server, just open the web admin of Mailco. You just type in the IP address or FQDN of your mail server in your favorite web browser. Note that in my case I skipped the creation of Let's Encrypt certificates. If you get an error like this, and yes I know this is in German, <laughs> then there is something wrong with your certificates. But that's probably a topic for another video. So I just will use the HTTP version of the web admin. Please don't do this in production mode because it will send all data completely unencrypted. In a test lab like this, that's totally fine, so I just continue. So the default admin and password you can check in the official documentation, link in the description below. The first thing you should do is changing the default admin password. You can also use the password generator of Mailcall or just type in something. Note, Mailcall also supports two-factor authentication, which is really nice. In the configuration tab, you can enter your DKIM keys, add forwarding hosts and set up some general settings, for example the spam settings map and so on. I will not go through all of these settings because they are almost different based on your requirements and your infrastructure. So this would be definitely too much for this video. When you click on configuration, system setup, you can monitor the status of the containers, restart and stop them and also inspect any log files that are generated by the system. To configure your domains, go to configuration, email setup and then you can just add a domain here. In my example, I will use the test domain ubuntu.local as a simple test entry. Note that you will need to restart the Sogo container after you have added a new domain. So let's do that. Okay, so the domain is now added successfully. Let's add a new mailbox. I use just a test email and I will also note down the password which is automatically generated because we will test the login with a simple webmail service later. Okay, so we now have just created a new mailbox. You also can add aliases to this mailbox if you want to. But let's have a look how the webmail service looks like and try to send a simple test mail. You can see the webmail based on Sogo looks very nice and smooth. You can do almost everything you would expect from mail service. You can read send emails, you have a calendar, an address book and it looks very nice. Sogo by the way is a fully featured groupware solution that is completely free and open source. You can also find it within smaller companies or even web hosters that are using it. So it is also a very well established solution you can just set up with a few simple commands. Ok, time to do a summary. And we're done. 
I know this took me a bit longer than 10 minutes. Please don't judge me for that because I wanted to explain everything and wanted to be always accurate with my explanations. I think it doesn't make sense to just rush through a tutorial without understanding what you're actually doing. So my goal is to always explain what I do, explain every single command I'm typing in the command line so that you can really follow and understand what I'm doing here. So there are also probably a few things you might do afterwards. So probably you will need to set up an MX record on your public domain servers that will point to the IP address of your new mail server. You also probably will need to set up an SPF record or DKIM keys because otherwise other email servers will just reject your emails because they don't trust your email server yet. Now if you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I always want to teach you how to become a real IT professional and I'm pushing out a new video every Monday. So also ring the bell to get a notification when my new video comes online. Well thanks everybody for watching, I hope you could learn something, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and see you soon.